These are the stories. My little girl, she's changing lives just by being herself. Of organizations and people making a difference. When you first tell someone about adaptive wheelchair boxing, it doesn't sound real. And empowering others. It saved my life. It saved my life. Across Canada. I scored my first goal in my first blind hockey game. In our community. My name is Lachlan McDonald. I grew up in Anaganish County in a pretty rural fishing community. Yeah, Anaganish has come a long way, I will say that, but it was really rough. Like, it's a Catholic town with a lot of shame. Like, there just is a lot of shame around sex and sexuality. Lachlan is a sex educator. He believes that sex and pleasure can be a healing experience, especially for people with disabilities. A lot of people with disabilities are constantly enduring and like to have a bit of like euphoria and have like excitement and like, yeah, just like hot times. It's really transformative and it's like physiologically really healing. You know, your cells want pleasure. Like every single individual cell in your body is designed to seek pleasure. Like it knows what to do. If you don't do anything, your body actually knows what to do. And I think that's what's so exciting about sex and, and disability. I really think on a cellular level, like it changes your body. Andrew Jansen has a genetic condition that has decreased his mobility. As his body has changed, so has his experience with sex. When I started trying to date again after uh, starting to use a wheelchair and having more barriers with my hands, that type of thing, it, it just was like people didn't even see me anymore. People with disabilities are just viewed as not being sexual beings and that is just one of the biggest attitudinal barriers to accessing anything. Lack of access to sex doesn't stop at dating. There are also barriers to self-pleasure. Many sex toys for self-pleasure are designed with able-bodied people in mind. Rochelle Manet is a sex educator for a sex shop named Venus Envy. Most sex toys were very much focused on penetrative sex. There was an assumption that, you know, something was going around the penis or something was going inside of the vagina. Sex doesn't have to mean touching genitals. It doesn't have to mean orgasming. It can mean a million and one different things. Like pleasure in sex can be so vast. But I think right now what I've noticed is really lacking is just trying to like imagine bodies that aren't able-bodied in the creation of sex toys. That doesn't seem to be happening all that much. There's an organization, or rather a society, that is prepared to fill that gap. They've been making custom devices for people with disabilities for over 35 years. They are the Tetra Society of North America. Andrew Jansen is the regional coordinator in Atlantic Canada for Tetra. Overall, Tetra builds custom assistive devices for people with disabilities. That's the, the general idea. Um, and we do that by recruiting a variety of different skilled volunteers who work directly with people with disabilities to design something that meets someone's very specific need. We build things that don't exist elsewhere. Venus Envy and the Tetra Society are embarking on a pilot project with a small group of participants. Each participant has made a request for an accessible pleasure toy. Lachlan McDonald is a participant in the Venus Envy Tetra collaboration. Growing up two and a half hours away from Halifax in rural Nova Scotia, he remembers going to Venus Envy as a formative experience in his young life. Venus Envy is a really incredible, life-changing kind of place for young queers, especially in a place like this. There's just nothing like it. As a queer person, it was very palpable, the treatment that I got that was different, especially because I have a number of older brothers. The harassment that I got in particular at school and, and by teachers and admin just really like broke me. It was just really, really rough. I just spent a lot of time at the beach, spent a lot of time exploring the woods behind the house, which was really nice. There were less limitations outdoors. There's a lot less competition or comparing myself to other people. I just felt really comfortable anytime, day or night, pitch black, like hearing animals. It just felt really soothing for me. That really has soothed like my nervous system in a way that is really supportive for 
my disabilities, honestly. It's a lot easier for me to be somebody who needs support outdoors than it is for me to be indoors, where it often feels like there's just a lot of limitations. What is your disability? People ask me that sometimes and I usually just don't answer because there's a really narrow scope of what be being disabled looks like and what it means and it's really actually about other people deciding that they see it rather than about me or the person telling other people like what it's like to interact in the world as me and I think that's the same with sex and gender like it, it, the, a lot of the analyzing that we do about it is about what other people see looking in and them being convinced. Another overlay in terms of the lens that we have of what eroticism is is just wrong. Like I just don't think it's this really narrow thing and that's why nature for me feels like safe and cozy and actually like brings out my eroticism. It's not like I'm doing weird things to trees, it's just that it's aliveness. Like that being alive is eroticism. I really feel like my sexuality is represented in a physical way in the water. To see it all happen and churn and flat calm and then like just every element it feels like of emotion is represented in the water. Like I love going to the ocean when it's really rough. It's like one of my favorite times. It feels really active um, and it makes me feel really alive actually. Exploring your sexuality is incredibly healing to I really think all other avenues of your life. I've been really interested in sex toys since I was pretty young, but I was too young to feel confident in my education around STIs. I was like, this feels safer. But it's like empowering to be able to create a sensation that is difficult to create on your own. And then adding toys, really anything is possible instead of being like, one plus two is sex. It's like literally anything, anywhere. I think it's really healing. I think to sink into pleasure, you're just a different body. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. Andrew is the ideal regional coordinator for Tetra because he has firsthand experience with different types of solutions for day to day problems. I rely on a lot of assistive technology myself, whether it's my chair or just the way that I rely on the elevator to get up and down from my apartment. I pressed the button the other day on an elevator and it uh, didn't come. And I pressed it a few times and it didn't come and I was like, oh, I am stuck, now what? Andrew has an engineering background and has made his own simple adaptations to things he uses every day. There's handles on my curtains, kind of look like handles from an exercise machine, but just it's a loop that I can just put my hand through and pull instead of having to grab onto something. It's similar with my cutlery, it's just a loop that you put on there. He also understands the cost barriers. That loop, I had to buy that silicone loop and I paid almost $100 for this package of seven of them, but I can only use two of them. So it's something that I rely on all the time, but again, is ridiculously expensive. If you're getting an item that is disability related, it's often said that, again, it's kind of custom and a company might be charging for all of the labor that's involved with that. You know, that's reasonable. But the cost of just making one item like that ends up being quite a lot. When you go to the Tetra website at tetrasociety.org, you can navigate to their solutions page to see hundreds of projects done with considerable ingenuity. The true advantage to Tetra is the low cost for the wide variety of items that have been made. One volunteer made an automotive guitar strummer for a busker who suffered brain injuries in an assault. The device is suctioned to the guitar and has guitar picks affixed to a disc. A control knob allows for changes in tempo as the strings are strummed up and down. Total cost, $30. For a mother in a wheelchair, a volunteer at Tetra equipped a stroller to the front end of her chair. Using simple parts you'd find at the hardware store, they attached a baby seat facing mom, allowing her to take the child anywhere she goes. Total cost, $200. Somebody built a voice-activated door opener that works with Google. It won't win any beauty contest as it's a mess of wires and circuit boards, but it works. Total cost, $35. The common thread that all of these adaptations and custom devices have in common is that they provide access to joy. They provide access to pleasure.
In the downtown streets of Halifax, nestled below brightly colored street art, is another spot of color, Venus Envy. Venus Envy is an education-based sex shop and bookstore. I think people come in here looking for a sex toy and they leave with learning probably a lot about their bodies, about sex toys more generally, about like how sex can work differently for a lot of different kinds of people. A lot of people see sex as something that's goal-driven. Um, you know, there's sort of like an end goal, whether that's like having a baby or even if it's just like an orgasm, but we sort of forget to look at sex as more like process oriented, which is kind of the best part of it. Like the actual like exploring desires and like fulfilling needs and like cravings is the fun part of sex for a lot of people. And that very much is part of the process versus this like end goal. I've had a chronic condition since I was a teenager. I predominantly use a cane. There's for sure a stigma around like disability and sex. And I think a big part of that stems from our obsession with like curing disability. A lot of people with disabilities, myself included, we spend a lot of time in like healthcare practitioners offices being poked and prodded and experiencing touch in ways that are by no means nice or enjoyable. So many people have told me that I have to get better, that I have to do more Pilates. I've been told to do yoga and Pilates by every single healthcare practitioner I've ever met. No healthcare practitioner has ever been like, you should try having more orgasms, that might help. <laughs> of course. But there's something so like exciting about being like, I'm taking my own pleasure into my own hands and I'm kind of saying like screw you to the people who have said that that's not important and I think that this project really taps into that. Auckland, his request to Tetra begins by identifying the problem. He's meeting with Rachel to get her input on what's available on the market and how it can help him with his needs. I'm looking for a vibrating toy that is like more broad and not so small. So I'm used to using the original um, version of the Tango, which is kind of like the size of like a lipstick. It has a really strong, specific vibration. To hold it, I find that the vibration goes directly into my hand and it really interrupts the ability to grip. It's too small, I have to grip it too firmly and it hurts my hand. What I have found are newer options on the market these days are these sort of like broad style toys that have little humps to them, essentially, um, that kind of has a flat surface as well. This one has sort of two very distinct notches um, and like buttons on the front. It has this one area that's sort of really bumpy and sort of fun to rub against, depending on if you like that kind of texture. And then this other side that sort of has a little like hump to it. Um, and it's very flat on the bottom. So what I do like about that is that it is broader, but it still feels like the bumps are like not quite what I'm looking for. What I really want is a handle that's like manip like that bends and also is like reliable and sturdy, you know? I don't think that anyone's come up with that yet. Yeah, like all these sex toys are on the market and we carry what is available to us to carry, but like the, the changing of things, the making yeah. it just right is yeah. what like true accessibility is, is yeah. to not be like, oh, a one size fits all situation because it's never gonna happen. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. The group of Tetra volunteers that'll be working on all of the participants' sex toys are engineering students at Dalhousie University. Lauren Mauser is one of those students. She's volunteering with Tetra so that she can reach for knowledge outside the rigidity of the classroom. Studying engineering uh, is pretty intensive. You know, I'm personally taking a reduced course load right now, so only four courses, which has enabled me to partake in projects like this. And part of that comes from a desire to learn more about what's going on around me and not just the theories behind the calculations. And beyond applying the school learning to, you know, an actual project, I've enjoyed helping someone. 
it's something that when you're working in large-scale projects you can forget and working one-on-one -on -one with someone and knowing like at the start they had this problem and I've in some way helped come up with a solution to that makes me feel pretty good. When I take time to sketch a design or project, I like to go somewhere where there's a lot of lighting and where I can see, almost see the process, but, but have it drawn out in my notebook that has all of my scribbles and get that visual representation of, of what we're trying to accomplish. So how does civil engineering apply to modifying sex toys? The process by which you approach problems in most cases, is quite universal. So identifying the problem and going through the design process, iterating on different designs and coming up with a solution. At the base of every problem, whether it's building a building or modifying a sex toy, it's the same. The team meets at the university and splays out parts and pieces of different sex toys on a table in front of them. For some, they are redesigning the handle for others, they are rewiring new buttons for simpler use. Nick Goss is an engineering graduate who has taken the lead on designing and building the device for Lachlan. His grip will like give out, which interestingly, I developed carpal tunnel and now I have that happen occasionally so I can relate all of a sudden. Nice. Um, where you just like, he's just gripping and then it's not gripping anymore. I'm thinking that's just essentially gonna be a 3D printed handle. And then there's these little, or three arm clamps. So I'm thinking of just making like an adapter between that and a thick handle. And then it's kind of universal because he can clamp whatever he wants. I think that's the idea. As part of going the extra mile, Nick has decided to deliver the device personally to Lachlan, driving the two and a half hours to Antigonish County in rural Nova Scotia. This will be their first time meeting face to face. What I understood of our conversation was there's issues with maintaining the grip on smaller diameter objects. Yeah. So here we have it. Cool. The device. Sweet. Nick's early design discussions with the other engineers have come to fruition in producing his device. The clamp on one end unscrews and adjusts to fit any cylindrical object. Nick 3D printed a nut to attach to the handle of a walking stick with a strap on the end. All the parts were purchased cheaply or homemade on Nick's 3D printer. The whole contraption is about 8 inches and is very customizable. This is cool actually. Yeah, I'm kind of jazzed. One of the toys that I talked to Rochelle about is this small bullet toy actually. Yeah, I'm really curious to see if this will work in here. Um, oh yeah, I think it's actually small enough. Cool, this is very exciting because what I like about this toy is that it gives a lot of really direct sensation, but yeah, to hold it, I just get a lot of pain and like stiffness in my hand and end up dropping it and it's just not a lot of fun. So what I like about this is that I can move and adjust it to where I wanna be, like this. Yeah, this is really cool. And take a break, which I think is very exciting. This is like really cool. I really appreciate it. I'm really curious, like what was it like for you to participate with Tetra, specifically on adaptive sex toys? Yeah, so uh, this is my first delivered project. So this is the first time I've had the satisfaction of, of actually seeing the person that is gonna help. So, cool. so it feels pretty good now. But I've put so many years into becoming an engineer and there is less opportunities to help people than it may seem in engineering. And I think Tetra provides an awesome in-between between, between uh, engineers looking to help people directly and finding those people that, that would like the help. Ultimately, when it comes to sex, you don't want it to feel inhuman. Uh, yeah. And you want your solution to feel like an extension of yourself because otherwise you're not gonna enjoy using it. Honestly, like when you said that, like an extension of yourself, I got like actual chills. Like it's really intense to go from being so used to it just being like a burden feeling to having someone be, yeah, super open and like genuinely curious and interested to help. I think that people have a really cookie cutter image of what disability looks like and I don't generally fit that for people and that is really hard. Um, Cause in the past I felt like I was like, 
accessing resources that could be for someone else, but really the more that I've just asked for what I need in life, it's just made my life so much better and then I have more to offer other people and like connections are a lot more genuine. So. I, I receive that judgment like quite a bit and that's one of the reasons why I don't talk in detail about what exactly all my disabilities are. I usually just talk about like what my needs are based on context. Um, but I didn't feel like judged based on that. Like I felt like you were just, yeah, we were just riffing and trying to find a human solution, which is really exciting. I think is another big reason I'm involved in Tetra is just it's, it's nice to have that human aspect of it and to have a direct impact on somebody's life. I think this is important work. There's a lot of gaps in the ways that like an items and spaces are built that just don't consider people with disabilities. And it's ranging from that to if I want to play a sport, if I want to play music, then there's always something that I would have to adapt. I'd have to add something and change something. Those aren't things that you go to the system and they're gonna help you be able to fire a, a compound bow. You know, if you want to do archery, that's not something you can go and be like, okay, well, I need a walker and I also need a compound bow that I can fire. That's not typically how that's approached. It's like, well, you need the basic things to be able to survive, but not the things to actually experience life. And yeah, like it's kind of emotional thinking about that, but just it's so important. It's so important to have access to things that are about just being able to live your life. Producer and director, Bradley Rivers. Cinematography, Bradley Rivers, Mike Zashevsky. Editor, Bradley Rivers. Special thanks, Andrew Jansen, Rachel Mannett, Lachlan McDonald, Lauren Mauser, Nick Gauze. Narrator, Jim Van Horn. Integrated Describe Video Specialist, Ron Rickford. Content Development Specialist, Ryan Delahanty. Coordinating Producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director Production, Kara Nye. Director Programming, Brian Perdue. VP Content Development and Programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2022, Accessible Media, Inc.